Okay. So okay. we are live. <laughs> Hello. Good evening, everyone. We are here today uh, at the Portuguese American Art Gallery uh, to meet the artist uh, Lucia de Brito Franco. I would like to welcome you on the behalf of the Embassy of Portugal, the Palcas, the Chamber of Commerce, and FLAD. My name is Sandra Pires, and I'm the cultural attache at the Embassy of Portugal in Washington, D.C. Um, this session is going to be streamed on Facebook as well as on Zoom. So I would like to ask you to ask questions on the chat box or on Facebook. You can also ask questions and um, Lucia will answer the questions. So we have here with us uh, also Elizabeth Cascairo, who will be co-hosting co this session with me. And uh, Elizabeth, would you like to introduce yourself and the artist we are going to uh, meet today here, Lucia de Brito Franco? Sure. Um, thank you, Sandra. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Cascairo. I'm a Portuguese artist based in Washington, D.C. Um, and I'm very happy to introduce Lucia. She was born in Lisbon and she began painting during her teens. Uh, she studied oil painting and drawing with painter Artur Ramos and at Ar uh, Arco in Lisbon. Uh, she also studied watercolors in um, England. She has a degree in architecture from Lisbon University. Uh, Lucia lives and works from Columbia Falls, Montana, Fayal Island in the Azores and Lisbon. Uh, she has exhibited her work uh, in solo and group exhibitions in Portugal, the Azores, Switzerland, and the United States. Her work is in private uh, art collections in Europe, uh, the UK, and the US. She is represented by Montana Modern Fine Art Gallery in Kalispell, Montana. Her website is uh, luciadebritfranco.com. Um, I would like to mention to our audience that there is a possibility to post questions to Lucia uh, in the chat box in your screen. Uh, she will respond to them to the best of her ability during the question and answer session uh, during and after her presentation. Lucia? Hello, nice to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation to talk about my work. Lucia, we would like maybe to start with a question to break the ice. So, mm -hmm. um, so how, uh, when and how did you start painting? Oh, I started painting, well, probably since I was a very young child, but I don't even remember exactly. But more seriously, when I was 16 years old, and I was so lucky to have drawing and painting tuition from Arthur Hamuch, a very classical uh, painter in Portugal. He, he started having giving some lessons in the um, in the high school I had uh, I was attending to, and we had this most amazing room with big windows facing the River Tejo, and I was the only student that attended to this art lessons. I was so lucky to have his full attention and uh, have a, a whole art studio to begin to learn. My mother was so kind to give me, um, she's also an artist, painter, and sculpture as well. So she gave me um, all the wooden case with oil paintings and, uh, you know, um, different uh, uh, brushes, all the materials. So I only had to buy a few more paints and I was quite set to, to start. <laughs> uh, my main interest was to, um, to learn the classical techniques and uh, Arthur Hamush was the, the right teacher to have because he's so interested in, uh, uh, you know, learning the really structure, classic drawings and uh, uh, painting with several layers, a painting that takes weeks to be built upon. And I, I think I had the, the best wish I could uh, imagine. <laughs> he was always telling me, Lucia, you must go to fine art school, you know, to the faculty. But I was such a rebel then. And when I became 17, 18 years old, I just thought, no, 
I don't want to go to, you know, to fine arts yet. I want to go travel. So I decided to go to England and study watercolors at uh, another artist studio, Leslie King. And this way, I was pursuing arts, but without being exactly inside the academia. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, Lucia, uh, who are some of the artists that uh, have inspired you? So when I went to England, I was fascinated with Turner watercolors, and he's one of the, the main artists that has inspired my work because um, of the ambience of his landscapes and uh, as well how he also is get, get himself inspired. He would like to go, he was always said, always going out there to be in the in the scene of what he wanted to paint. And then he would go to the studio and work on it. So it, it was something um, I, I could relate a lot to it. That's very nice. And uh, Lucia, can you tell us um, a little bit about the process of making your work? Where do you get the inspiration for your art? Yes, of course. I get inspired for my art from life itself. So the experience of being in this body as a woman, that's the vehicle for my art. It is more, it's just focused on life. And, um, you know, I don't get to worry about uh, the problems that are going on in the world or problems that people have, emotions, this and that. Emotions are just like, waves in in the, the beach they come and go so they're just so transitory and uh, what I feel is that I'm very curious about life itself how it's manifesting and that is the focus of my work um, I can show you some of the, the paintings and uh, some pictures to illustrate if you'd like to see sure we would love to so we have them in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here we have the uh, some images. Some of the works that are we're beginning to see are actually have been painted in Montana. Because you, you live I, in Montana and in Portugal, right? Yes, yes. Uh, for example, this one here, it's uh, inspired in the Wild Horse uh, Islands, which is uh, at the Flathead uh, Lake. And the first summer I came to Montana, I was actually sailing quite a, a bit there with my husband. We had an art studio right by the, the lake. So this island, just went into all my memory, the body memory, not just, you know, it's not just the ideas, but um, it came up in my artwork. Here we have an image of the old Dayton Bank that I used as an art studio in the first summer I spent in Montana. And the hiking in Glacier National Park, that also uh, was very inspiring to my first works in Montana. Um, I'm very fascinated with with light itself and water and how light and water have an essential role in uh, life. <laughs> Without light, sunlight or water, there would be no life. So it is uh, very important in my body of work. Here we can see this uh, this uh, painting with a with a claw of a, a grizzly bear which is easy to find in Montana on the trees. <laughs> and as well as we can see plenty of bears. <laughs> so some of the paintings are just focused on the energetic feelings that I have. For example, this encounter with the, the, well, with the, the blue sharks, which has been in the Azores, I was free diving next to them and um, as you can see, this uh, this shark has a, a hook in his jaw. This day I was free diving with about um, 
five blue sharks and they were enormous. <laughs> but uh, the swimming and they, they had tales of war, you know, with hooks, with cuts and some of the things were cut and all that. Um, but they were still very curious and would come very near us. What you can see in this detail of this painting that I have here, you have the old the blue, the movement of the moment, which is not exactly the visual moment, but more what I'm feeling. And you have a little bit of red. So I think that every, you know, this red that I usually get in these paintings that have to do with the, the sharks, I believe it's not anything about blood, although sometimes they're eating fish and it's a bit red. This is my excitement. So the red in my artwork, many times it's about my excitement. Here you can see another painting that has been inspired in the encounter with the sharks. And there you have this glimpse of red. <laughs> no, it's not blood, it's excitement. <laughs> and um, in this image you can see, I love free diving. And uh, here I'm, I, I'm actually not in this image. This was taken by a friend of mine, but these are um, the, the rays in the, the mobile rays offshore in the Azores. And uh, it's just so amazing to dive with these animals. They are just as curious of us as we are of them. And they can sense that I need to breathe. So as I come up to breathe, they, they swim back and come to see me and almost right to my face and look into my eyes. It's amazing. So I have plenty of paintings inspired in these moments, like this one, which is the, called Princess Alice Bank and is focused on the, on the sunlight going through the column of water. Uh, this is inside a cave that I love going into in the Azores because I have to wait for the sunset so the light goes right in, and usually June is quite a good time of the year. This is when the, the sun is going mostly to the north, and this cave is facing the north. It's inside a, an old volcano, this cave, an underwater cave inside a volcano. And uh, I just love going in there and feeling the, and seeing the, the different effects of light. It's like being inside a cathedral. So I have tons of paintings inspired in. <laughs> in the light and, and the darkness of being inside these caves. And as well, I am fascinated with uh, how the planet is alive, you know? And in the Azores, there are some uh, active volcanoes like uh, the Pico. I have slept on top of uh, Pico and it was, uh, the stones, they were warm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's quite uh, strange when you can feel that it is really alive. You know, it, it, we never know when it's going to start <laughs> an eruption. Here we can see some images. Uh, this one is a painting that I have did. I have painted for uh, Norberto. He's a um, very well-known uh, diver in uh, Feal in the Azores. And now we have a body of work that is from a few years ago, from, for example, it's from 2014, I believe. Also inspired uh, in the, how the, the planet is alive, in the volcanic aspect of the planet. And this one is inspired in Sintra. I love mountain biking. And uh, some of my paintings are also capturing the forest with the speed as I go through the forest. This one here in particular um, is uh, about uh, the feeling of light on the body, on the skin. And uh, for example, when I was spending, I mean, I've been living most of the time now in Montana, especially the winter time. But when I was spending the winters in the region of uh, Lisbon, I would go often to a habita in the winter and swim in the sea. And then when I would get out, 
I would um, stay in the sun. And the, the sun in the wind time can be quite interesting how we feel it within. And I believe that we also feel it spiritually. So this painting is about that experience. Oh, it's really beautiful. <laughs> All my paintings are vibrant in color and uh, in a in gesture. Thank you for sharing, Lucia. It was really, well, really beautiful. Thank you. Glad you like. I see that you have lots of layers in your paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, lots of them are also inspired by the the ocean. There were lots of blues, right? Can you can you yes. tell us a little bit your your um, your 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 trajectory so that we know you? So you were born in Lisbon, and then how did the Azores came to your life? Because you mentioned the Azores. No, I mentioned the Azores. It is interesting. So I was born in Lisbon, and I would spend uh, my holidays as a child in the Algarve in the island of Ramona, and this was where I started first having contact with the ocean. One of the main themes in my body of work is the ocean. I'm fascinated with the ocean. So there in the islands, in the sandy islands, on the south of the Algarve, I started free diving. I would hold to the anchors of the boats so that I could stay a bit longer and withstand the currents which are quite strong in this region. And sometimes I will also come to the surface and uh, float with the current, the tide current as it's taking me up. I will just float and, and feel immersed with the, everything, with the sea and with the cosmos because we, I was being pulled by the moon and I knew all about it because I knew when the tide was going to be up and down. I, I kept that schedule so that I could go and swim at the best time. So the south of the Algarve is where I started having this strong connection with the ocean. And my first paintings as a child were really focused on, on these experiences and the water. And I went to the Azores when I was eight years old with my parents and my uh, brother and sisters. I thought, oh, this is such a paradise. And I had already read about the Azores in some tales of Latin and the Atlantis, the lost Atlantis. So I was very curious and I thought I must come from here because I love the ocean. It must be my home. Although my family has nothing, they're not related anything with the Azores. They're just from the continent of Portugal. So later on, I went as a youth uh, camping and getting to know more islands. And uh, in 2015, as I became a professional artist in 2013, in 2015, I decided I'm going to create my own artist residence and it's going to be in the Azores. So I had, I planned for spending three months and a half per year, just fully painting and focused without thinking about selling paintings. I would make all the sales during the winter and spring in Lisbon put all that money together so that I could spend the whole summer in the Azores painting, going to the sea, going back to the studio and just focusing on the ocean and the art and not worrying about how I'm going to get money to do my work. The sales part was done in Lisbon because it's also where I have more uh, potential clients. So for three years, in 2015, 16, and 17, I did my own artist residencies with the, the, um, uh, some, um, we, uh, the municipality of Orta were great because they, they let me use a beautiful room as a, an art studio in the Banco de Artistas, which they have right in town with a great view to the Marina of Orta, 
and the Pico Mountain and the ocean. So it was it's quite an amazing room to be painting at. And that's how I get connected with the Zosh. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, Lucia, uh, could you mention how COVID affected your work or didn't affect it? Mm. The body of work itself, it did not affect because my work is focused on uh, life. So it did not get sick. <laughs> um, regarding the exhibitions, well, I was... Uh, I kept on producing my work and uh, I had all the exhibitions that I had intended to, that I had planned, more or less in the same dates, it didn't have, it didn't have much change. So uh, when uh, it all started, I was actually in Montana and uh, I flew back to Portugal to do a great exhibition in the south of Lisbon that stayed for the whole summer. Instead of a big opening party, we just did smaller uh, openings with smaller groups and this year this summer it has been just the same I have a, a big exhibition in the Ocean Museum Kingdom Carlos in Cascais and at the Port São Jorge de Carlos and we just we've been having small meetings with people instead of a big opening party so in that aspect I quite miss having a good vernissage I love having everybody together, talking about art. It just makes more sense to be together. <laughs> True. In the, in the, how do you connect with the Montana then? How do you, and, the, and how did you like leave the, like Montana, you don't have the ocean. So how was it as a diver and a painter? Yes, I know. It was not so easy at the beginning. I can tell you, I have never imagined myself going much to the States before until uh, I met my husband in the spring of uh, 2018 and he invited me to spend the summer in Montana. And he told me, Lucia, we can uh, rent an old bank by a marina where I have a sailboat in Flathead Lake. And I thought, an old bank? That was such a coincidence because I had been painting in an old bank in the Azores. So I accepted this invitation. I was so curious and I was in loving his company. I wanted to be with him as well. And that's how I came out to, to be um, living in Montana half of the year. In the summer, the first summer, it was, I mean, it was beautiful. But at the same time, quite difficult for me because I was so used to be by the ocean within a few meters distance. I was painting and living by the ocean in Gilsos, so I could just get out of my work and go and dive within a few minutes. And in Montana, we are like 14 hours away from the sea, the Pacific Ocean, and it's so freezing, so cold, and completely different, of course. But it has its beauty. It, it is a very natural area with tons of wilderness it's an amazing landscape very inspiring i just miss the ocean in the summertime mm -hmm. um, i do love the winter times in montana mm -hmm. i love the winter because of uh, all the snow and the mountains and the forests and uh, I really don't go that well, so often to the ocean in the summer time, in the winter time. So it's a perfect place to be in the winter time, Montana. Well, I guess the snow on the mountains almost looks like, way, you know, the ocean, a white ocean. You could almost yeah. think of it that way, right? You fall uh, in it, you, <laughs> you swim. Yes, it's, it, kind of. it's so it's so calm and. And there is so much solitude. I do love to be immersed in nature and feel the power around me. This very pure energy. And at the same time, it seems like it's so solitude and there is wildlife everywhere. Because in the snow, we can see the food tracks from the hunting from the night before. So it's very interesting. For example, I can be skiing alone through the forest and then I'm finding all these food tracks of all the wildlife that has been there a few hours before, in the evening, in the night. It's a fascinating territory for me. 
I love it. That's great that you could adapt and you could uh, you could see other, uh, I mean, be open to other other landscapes as well. But you know, you know something. It is interesting that the. I always had the feeling that I was going to have, uh, I was going to live in such a landscape with mountains and snow. I had this feeling. I could see it in my mind before I had been there. <laughs> before you met your husband, or uh... yes, yes, because when I would travel, I remember traveling to to Switzerland, for example, because in 2015 I had a. Um, I was part of an international uh, exhibition in Montreux, and I remember biking by the lake, by the Lake Le Mans, and seeing the mountains on the other side, and it was like I was seeing some mountains, and I was like seeing an image that I could remember, and I had not been there before. I, I mean, I had been there a few years before, but it was a different kind of memory. It was very um, familiar to me. And then uh, I went to Norway some time later to visit some friends. And as I was skiing in the, you know, in the mountains, I also felt this is there's something in this kind of landscape that it, it is related to my home. But I hadn't, I was not there yet. I didn't know where my home was yet. <laughs> well, I guess you are related, like you relate to the elements, to the to nature, to the sea. So to, you are to the to the ocean, to the forests. So you are connected to the to the elements. Yeah. Yes, and the the my most the the most important thing about going to nature and connecting with the elements is that. Uh, it also opens doors to connect within. Mm -hmm. It's like you are there facing all these challenges. You know, it's not always so beautiful and sunny. Many times there is strong storms and the wind and it's blowing snow for days. But you are meeting within yourself, encountering uh, deeper levels of awareness with yourself. True. That's true. And uh, this is what I hope that uh, comes up to my artwork. So when I'm painting, you know, I go to nature, I gather this energy, and then when I come up, to, I come back to the studio, when I'm painting, I do not use my rational mind or the emotional ego. I turn it off. It's quite interesting because I've also studied architecture. I have worked as architect and you have to think so much. It's tiring. And when I'm painting, I turn it off and I just let the nature energy flow for me to the artwork without any censorship. I'm picking up the colors or the paints without thinking. I just do it intuitively, always. And that's how the artworks, they come out, you know, with such an energy and flowing so well. If I was to think, they would be miserable. They would be different. They would be uh, not so intense. So, uh, in fact, you mentioned architecture and you obviously studied uh, quite a few years uh, mm -hmm. in that field. So... Has it yeah. had any impact at all on your work? Um, what do you think? Or on the process of no. producing it? Architecture has not had any impact on the visual work of my artwork, but it does have, it is, uh, it has been a great um, apprentice. It has been great to learn because it gives discipline and structure. So it's not only as an artist, I'm not just painting. I have to get organized <laughs> and take care of immense logistics. For example, I'm going to be painting for the whole summer in the Azores. I have to get all materials, pack them and ship them. And there's a whole uh, thing about the organization that I have learned from architecture that I really treasure. Mm -hmm. Now, how am I going to be using it in the future? I'm not thinking, I don't know when I'm going to be doing projects, uh, but you know, professionally, but for sure, 
that I see myself designing an art studio for me and a house. Mm -hmm. In that way, I will use uh, my architecture <laughs> course. That's very nice. And um, what what projects do, do you have? New projects? You mentioned that you are doing an exhibition now in Cascais. It's it's running right now, right? Yes. The exhibition is in Cascais. It's with a body of work that was painted uh, last summer in Feal. That is the body of work that is in the Museo King Don Carlos. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole other body of work which is from uh, 2013 to 2020, and that is in the fort, the Saint Georges de Carlos. And uh, this exhibition is called um, uh, Our Encontro do Oceano. So then, you know, in ocean encounter, ocean encounter. And it's mainly that, it's uh, artwork that was inspired in, uh, in the ocean. Mm -hmm. The future projects, I have one very important. I would like to have a body, uh, a collection inspired in diving with whales. I haven't had a chance yet. It is not so straightforward because uh, one needs licenses and uh, the boat uh, and logistics that are not so easy. So I hope it will happen within the next few years. Uh, the sooner, the better. Yes. So uh, what are your, uh, do you have, could you mention like, um, uh, what are your goals for your art career, like in the future? Uh, you mentioned some immediate goals, mm -hmm. and uh, wh where do you see yourself going? I see that um, I want my art to keep um, to keep reaching people and make them feel what I feel. I feel great joy when I'm painting. This is one of the my favorite aspects of being an artist, which I have chosen to be. Since I was a little girl, I knew I was going to be an artist, a painter. But uh, I just love painting. It makes me feel so happy. So if uh, if the public can feel this happiness, that is uh, a great joy. It's great. And um, so one goal is keep on producing so that I can inspire the public. Being able to exhibit my work to larger publics, because not that many people know about it yet. <laughs> and I have been painting for almost 30 years. Can you believe it? I don't feel that it's been that long. <laughs> but today I was counting. I, I was checking how many years, when did I start it? It's been a long time. Mm. And um, to keep on enjoying myself and feeling great happiness when I'm painting, that's the, the great goal. Because it's not just, each artwork, it's uh, really produced with love. Mm -hmm. And out of this passion for life that I have. So it's not a product that we have the intention to be exhibited with a certain concept. It's something that it really comes from um, from the heart, the heart. That's great. So we have here. Uh, so Angela Costa Simões says she really loves the colors. She she yeah. And um, and then uh, we have a question uh, also for you. How can we purchase your your paintings? My art work. What, how can you purchase? Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can contact me through my website. And if you are in the United States, you can contact the gallery in a, the Montana Modern Fine Art Gallery. They have uh, about 16 or more paintings there available at their, at their website. They can take the pictures. So and what is the those... name of your website so that people my website it's uh, Lucia de Brito Franco dot com, and, it, and through me you can uh, um, uh, buy the paintings that I have available, uh, you know, in my website or other ones that I can send more images. Okay. Um, uh, okay, and we can we also find you on social media or 
can we also contact you on social media? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have an artist page on Facebook. You can also see some of uh, my body of work and pictures of my life in Instagram. I'm not such a, you know, I should be more um, disciplined to only put pictures of the artwork in Instagram, but I just end up putting different things of life. <laughs> And you can also see some of my videos related with my artwork on the Vimeo. Okay, so how do we find you? It's always Lucia de Brito Franco on, exactly. on, on YouTube, uh, on YouTube, sorry, on um, on Facebook and on Instagram? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, good. And um... So what do you recommend like for new artists that are starting? What can you recommend them? Um, I don't know, any advice that you have for new artists that are starting or? Yes, absolutely. And I tell you, I knew I was going to be a painter when I was just a little girl. So what I would tell someone that can feel that is an artist, I would say, follow your intuition. And uh, do not listen to any other people saying that they might be afraid of that, of that path or, or try to scare you off, you know, saying you won't leave, you will not survive, it's too hard, or just follow your intuition and do what you are passionate about. Because we are only living here in this one body once. Not like you get the second run in here now as this person. So we might as well leave it to the fully. To all that we can be here, to the full potential. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's a good advice. <laughs> and I, I was lucky. I never, you know, since I was a little girl, my parents, my mother, a painter, so it was accepted in the family that I would become a, an artist. That is good. So the, they had, my family has always uh, come to all the openings, all the vernissages. They're the first ones to be there. So that is very nice. And um, I remember as a, as a young child, during, in the weekends, we would always go see some art exhibitions. So it was, it was easy for me, easy in the terms when I decided to make this choice, it was expected that I would become a painter. <laughs> and are you preparing like a, when you go back to, when you come back to the US, are you preparing like an exhibition in Montana? Yes, yes. Yes? I will have, the, in the fall, I will have an exhibition in Montana Modern Fine Art. Uh, actually, before I left, uh, just a few months ago, I left around May, I left quite a few new uh, paintings. Uh, at the gallery, so there's always some of my work there, but in the fall I will have a, an exhibition with more works. Do you know more or less the, the time frame already? I don't have the time frame because it has to do when I uh, fly back and I haven't bought the ticket yet. <laughs> I always buy it a few weeks before because, you know, sometimes I'm going to be in the Azores and sometimes I'm in I might get an invitation to sail back to the continent, you know, and then I have to disassemble the exhibition in Lisbon. It's just good to give it a little freedom. <laughs> That's good. Are you going to do this summer with the, what you were doing before, like staying in the, in the Azores painting for, uh, yes. for a few months? Yes, I'm going to be there for until the end of September. I cannot resist it to be by the ocean. So I'm preparing, I have quite a few paintings, new canvases that I must pack and ship there. It's going to be a lot of work these next few days, prepare all the logistics. But so you go, with the, you go with the canvases already stretched to the Azores? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. In the, I'm going to be staying in the, Fayal Island, or island where I have a, a small uh, cabin and a little lamp pot. And there you don't have, you know, art shops with big canvases like the ones I use. There is an art shop, yes. 
but they, they sell just small canvases and small paints, which is fine, it's nice. Sometimes you might need to go there and buy a few things. And I go there, especially because they do the frames. So sometimes I sell paintings in the island and the clients want to have a frame. But I use bigger sizes of canvases, so I have to get them all in Lisbon and ship them. Uh, it, takes, it takes quite a bit of work. Of course. But also, like to when you you also ship them to Montana as well. The, your your paintings? Mm, no, in Montana I have uh, some good shops where I can buy the canvases. Mm -hmm. Not the same quality as the, what I'm used to here in Portugal. Actually, it's a bit different. Uh, but uh, I have traveled on the airplane with my own paints to Montana <laughs> quite a few times, more than once. Because I use a lot of European paints, especially French and Italian brands, which are not easy to get uh, in the United States. Not even when you order online. They don't sell the big sizes that I usually use. So sometimes I travel with paints to Montana. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So I just want to remind the audience that you can post questions uh, on, uh, on Zoom or on Facebook. And we will get the questions here. If you have any other question, we are uh, we are almost closing. So if you have one last question for Lucia, you know she would be very happy to answer. Yeah. And um, yeah. So if we don't have answer, uh, questions, I don't know if you want to share any other thing, Lucia, because it's so interesting your your whole trajectory and uh, what you do. And your passion, the passion that you put into it, that, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to share any story, any video that you might have. Um, yes, I can uh, try to, to share something if you'd like. Sure. Um, do you want to see a video? Let yes. See. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to get it here. I am Lucy The second, let me get it to share. All right, you ready? Yes. I am Lucy de Brito Franco. I'm a fine artist painter. I live in Portugal, in the Azores, in the mid-Atlantic Ocean, and in Montana, by Glacier National Park, in the United States. My art is born from a deep encounter with nature, the wild and the human nature. And through this encounter, I attempt to have a glimpse into the miracle of life, and ultimately, the expansion of consciousness. I love being among the elements, whether in stillness or amidst a storm. Being out there is entering deeper levels of awareness within. I love cycling vigorously, flowing through the treacherous terrain and climbing stunning mountains. I love the winter and the snow, skiing silently through the forest and lakes, the solitude, and yet there are foot tracks of wildlife everywhere, thrilling tales of the nights before. I love being in the ocean. And since my early days, free diving as a child, I felt most at home. I love the immense freedom of movement one can feel underwater. The sun rays swirling into the deep. The gracious marble rays as if flying, circling back to me. As I come up to breathe, looking into my eyes.
While painting, I turn off the rational mind and emotional ego and let the body flow. The paintings grow in layers which at first capture experiences that are visually unexplainable. The sounds, the scents, the ocean currents, the excitement of an encounter with whom we love, with grizzly and black bears, with sharks and manta rays. On the surface of the painting is the vibration of light. I am fascinated by sunlight and water and how they play an essential role in life as we know it. It is my conscious intention that my art celebrates life and that it may bring joy and inspiration to the viewer. That's beautiful. Beautiful video. Nice. Images are from the Glacier Park in, uh, in, um, in Montana and from the Azores? Yes. Yes, and some of them as well from a habida. <laughs> yeah, I recognize the habida. Actually, there was one one part that looked like a habida. Mm -hmm. I, I love a habida. You know, Lisbon has amazing places just within half an hour distance driving, and I've always made plenty of use to, of these places where I could go to nature, a habida and Sintra. <laughs> Lucia, thank you so much for sharing your your experience, your art, you know, your passion with us. And um, you know, uh, I really wanted to thank you and Elizabeth also to be here today. And um, and I would like to ask the audience to to visit the Portuguese American Art Gallery as well. You will see um, Lucia's work there, her contact, her website. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, you just Google Portuguese American Art Gallery and you will get there. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here and for, uh, for, for doing this. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Bye, Lucia. Bye. Bye-bye.